any damage and we're not going to know that the rule is is that you have to wait about two hours from the initial arrival the forecasted arrival of the first wave it, then if there's nothing happening within that two hours or after those two hours then you're pretty much uh, safe here so a couple hours from now if Taiwan is no longer or hasn't been reported uh, any damage or any significant to wave heights here I think we're going to be okay Philippines is next 10 to 11 GMT and authorities and now we're getting word of evacuated uh, with good reason, obviously, here, right? 12 coastal areas. Uh, they've sent maritime warnings to ships uh, at sea, told the smaller fishing boats uh, to come on shore. The larger vessels actually have a, um, can pass through it uh, rather uh, safely if they can actually go further away from the coast. As you know, that amplitude uh, is, uh, you just couldn't feel it if uh, you're out uh, in open water there. So those uh, warnings and those uh, coastal evacuations are underway. Then we talk about Indonesia. 1050 to 1140 GMT and uh, there is Hawaii again they've been under a uh, tsunami warning now for a couple of hours uh, here as the civil sirens uh, have been uh, ongoing there and folks are uh, told to evacuate Australia from 1535 to 1845 and the difference in times here are because of the coastline and uh, the orientation of uh, the countries that you're seeing here. Chile, obviously, uh, very long, right? So it's going to take a while for the wave to get from the north to the south. So there you see the range. And take a look at that. 904 GMT tomorrow. So we're talking about an event here that is going to be ongoing for some time. It is uh, the uh, worst earthquake to hit Japan in 140 years. It is now ranked as uh, uh, Christina was pointing out there, uh, we are talking about a great earthquake here, and it is the seventh worst earthquake uh, that we've ever uh, recorded uh, in history uh, there, Anna. Yeah, quite extraordinary. Ivan Cabrera, thank you. We'll uh, check in a little later. We're now joined on the line by Simon Boxall. He's a, an oceanographer at the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton on the south coast of England. Uh, this is uh, quite enormous, the earthquake that has, has struck Japan. Uh, give us uh, a, a bit more background information, if you will. Well, the earthquake itself is huge, but what's more important, perhaps, um, is the fact that it happened beneath the sea, and this has created a substantive uh, tsunami. The tsunami moves across the Pacific at an incredibly fast pace, and the Pacific has a fantastic early warning system, but because the earthquake happened only a few miles, about 80 miles offshore of northeast Japan, it would have only have taken the initial wave um, about 15 to 20 minutes before it hit the coast. Now, from the earthquake to the wave hitting, there is no time to get any sort of warning system out. So really, that initial hit, um, people have had no warning that it was coming. And uh, if you look at the area that it covered, it's a very low-lying area of Japan. And the destruction and devastation it's caused is enormous. I mean, the wave is probably hitting literally miles inshore. Uh, Simon, it's frightening to actually uh, to hear that uh, those people would not have received uh, a warning. Uh, and we saw, obviously, the cars driving away from that, that massive wa wave and that wall of water. But as you say, uh, 15 to 20 minutes, that is not a lot of time to uh, seek uh, higher ground. Uh, Simon, we, we said that uh, some 50 countries have, have been uh, issued tsunami alerts. I mean, to, to give us a sense of, of how far reaching uh, this tsunami will be. The tsunami itself will be felt all over the Pacific. And the big question is, how big is the wave when it hits, for example, Hawaii, uh, the west coast of America, South America? The chances, and I emphasize chances are, it will be quite small because it should dissipate. However, Given the location of this, the earthquake, given the, the way in which this tsunami is propagating, um, it is sensible to put these um, outlying countries, outlying from the area of the tsunami generation, on, on uh, alert because it's sensible to evacuate the coastal areas because there is a chance that it could still cause damage um, around the entire Pacific Rim. Simon, the, the wave that hit Japan was, was a monster. It was something like 10 metres. That was the wall of water that hit the, the southeast of Japan. G give us a sense, for those people who are not familiar with tsunamis, as to how they form, how, how this can happen. A wall of water can just, uh, you know, hit, hit a city and, and keep moving. I mean, this is a thing. It does not stop. It doesn't stop. Well, what happens initially is you get an earth tremor, and the earth tremor, the earthquake, is a bit like you throwing a large rock into the pond. And you throw the rock into the pond, and it creates huge waves. 
um, hand over to London. Hello? Simon, my apologies there. I just had the producer speaking uh, to me. So uh, Japan has also been issued other, uh, other uh, tsunami warnings. I mean, how, how long will, will this last? So Ivan Cabrera, our meteorologist, said it's sort of that two-hour time frame. Um, what can you for tell Japan, us about that? For Japan, you're looking at sort of being on standby for the next couple of hours. For the Pacific as a whole, really for 12 hours. It will take 12 hours for that wave. The wave in the open ocean, once it's created, is moving at about the speed of a jumbo jet, about 500 miles an hour. So you can work out how long it would take for that wave to move across the Pacific. So after 12 hours, um, really the, the, the danger is past. But in the immediate vicinity around Japan, the first two hours is going to be critical. All right, Simon Boxall uh, from the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton, uh, England. We certainly appreciate um, giving us uh, your analysis and, and uh, insight into what has taken place. Uh, a devastating, devastating scene indeed. Well, if you are just joining us, here's a quick look at the staggering disaster that has struck Japan. Tsunami waves driven by an 8.9 magnitude earthquake have slammed the northeastern coast. Well, it's the most powerful quake on record in Japan, and it's been followed by more than a dozen aftershocks. That means more tsunami waves possible for Japan, but uncounted millions of people are at risk as there are watches and, and warnings out for some uh, 50 countries, in fact, all around the Pacific Ocean. Well, first in line is Taiwan, uh, where an initial wave has just arrived. Well, the crashing waves have sparked a number of spectacular fires. This is an oil refinery in the city of Chiba in Japan. Officials say five nuclear power plants in the northeast have been shut down with the assurance there is no danger of radio leaks. Well, transportation all across the northeast has come to a standstill. You are now looking at the airport in hard-hit Sendai. Now, this disaster is uh, just hours old. It hit at uh, some 2.46 p.m. local time. And there are no good casualty numbers in just yet. Well, a handful of people have been confirmed killed, but some fear the death toll. This is CNN Breaking News. A massive and historic earthquake hits Japan and it is creating devastation across the country this morning. Yeah, the pictures are just astounding. A massive wall of water pushing aside everything in its path. Farmland flooded for miles, dragging along homes, cars, boats. These are some of the most stunning pictures as you see that wall of water just washing over farmland far inland from the coast of Japan. And good morning. This is special coverage this morning of American Morning on this Friday, March 11th. It's 5 a.m. here on the East Coast, 7 p.m. in Tokyo. And we're following breaking news from Japan after an 8.9 magnitude quake hits and triggers a massive 13-foot tsunami. Yeah, and the rescue operation is underway right now, but also happening right now. A lot of warnings are in place, tsunami warnings for at least 20 countries and Hawaii and the west coast of the U.S. under warnings as well. But let me tell you about this quake, a devastating one, one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. It was an 8.9 magnitude quake. It hit off the coast uh, of Japan overnight. Now, there have been several powerful aftershocks being felt, up to 7.0 in magnitude. Some of these, the quake was centered about 230 miles from Tokyo, but it was felt in Tokyo. Buildings swayed. Take a look at some of these pictures. Our bureau uh, there in Tokyo as well are some of our coworkers there being thrown around uh, at, at times as well. But this is just one uh, other view inside one of the places here. People, of course, poured out into the streets afterwards. They say it's a city in chaos right now. The danger uh, we have now, the concern, a tsunami. It did trigger a tsunami. Massive waves, some as high as 30 feet, starting to come ashore in some places. And this wall of water is starting to bring with it. It's washing away cars, boats, buildings. Looks like uh, lava almost making its way through. Here are some of the most stunning pictures. You have waves of mud and debris could be seen, like I said, like lava flowing uh, through some farmland. 
Some of these pictures, you, it's just hard to imagine what we're seeing, that this is actually happening. But we'll have more and more pictures as they continue to come in through us to us throughout the morning. There are at least eight deaths uh, reported, but we're certainly expecting that number to go up. Tsunami warnings, like I said, across the Pacific Rim, Hawaii, Alaska, west coast of the U.S. and Canada under those warnings.